Thank you for joining us. Namaste. Welcome to episode 98. So today, what I was playing with in my own practice, and we'll play with this in practice today, is doing some, I was doing this in some standing poses, and we'll see where it might fit in other poses, but using the interlocking the finger movement and using those in some standing poses. And because it's a different way of using the arms, it may give, give you more access to certain poses. You know, it might help you go into some of the standing poses that I was playing with. And of course, you just have to do this as best you can with your shoulder rotation. You might not have it fully up. It might be just in front of you. But hey, we'll just see what happens as we go about this practice. So let's begin. So I'm just going to sit on a block in Thunderbolt pose, dear Drasana. But you can, of course, um, sit simple cross legs. You can put a bolster down and what it's nice about a lot of the bit more pressure like when I sit with my sit bones here I can you know feel that deep connection into the ground the block and the ground and then if I add a bit more pressure in my feet and my shins and I've got support, and that's the base of our support. And then I can feel the lift in my spine. So we'll do, we'll do this little warm up using those interlock fingers in a bit of a vinyasa breath approach, which I think I haven't done here for a while. Maybe who knows when I've done it too last. But we begin the hands. you well in the inhales and exhales. So first you're going to cross your fingers. And just notice which finger crosses so you can change the sides. And you inhale the elbows up shoulder high and exhale and press them forward. And then on the next inhale, you inhale them up as high as you can. It doesn't mean they go way up. You don't want to distort your shoulder stretch right here and then exhale bring them hands forward but was it inhale see I've already messed up because I'm talking too much and then you just bring them back to prayer position so that's how it goes maybe you started with me maybe you didn't but we'll change to the other side and I'll make sure that we do about three rounds on each side just so we can get that flow going. So we're going to inhale, exhale in front, inhale, exhale so they come behind, inhale, exhale, inhale the hands to prayers, prayer, exhale. Do the other side. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Behind. Exhale. In front. Inhale. Prayer. And exhale. Returning to the first song. Thanks. 
So that could be something that you add to any routine of stretching in the morning, and you could just simply do that to give yourself a little breath practice, connecting it with movement. Now we've been sitting for a while, so especially if you're sitting like me, you may feel it with me. So you can take the block away, tuck the toes under here, walk the hands forward, and then stretching out the feet. Maybe you didn't sit like I did, but this is still a great position to stretch out the feet, the ankles, and of course, there's a bit of stretch through the lower back. And then come up to all fours and then go into big toes together, knees wide by slowly bringing those sit bones back to your heels. Want to 
have some relationship with that connection from the heels all the way up to the sit bones. And then while we're here, we'll do an interlock of the fingers, bring them in front, inhale up, open the breaths here. Change the crossover. Inhale in front. Lift them up. Couple of breaths here. And then release down. So we'll have little breaks to shake it out when we're because we're gonna do quite a bit of this. And one of the reasons I thought it was a great practice was, you know, getting more stretch in the wrists. We tend to be on our phones all the time, typing on computers, and do we actually get into some of that stretching in the wrist? So we're going to go into Warrior One by first crossing the fingers, bring them straight in front of you. Lift it up so you've got that elevation, and then you're going to slowly bring. I'm bringing my right foot back, so you can do that as well. It's good to practice poses on opposite sides of the legs sometimes. So I've got my left foot forward and my right leg back. Release the arms out to the side because that's a, a, a lovely different kind of movement. And then it's kind of like the opposite movement. We want to keep as much range of movement. So now change your crossover. And then inhale forward, lift them up. And then take the other leg, so in my case, it's my left foot back behind me, and come into warrior one. Come to the rest here. Really feeling that power in the leg. And then stepping that foot forward. And then letting the arms float to the side. And a couple of breaths there. So we're going to do the same pose. And we'll do a similar arm position, but we'll start a little differently. So for the second round, bring the fingers for the crossover. And then just bring them forward. Now bring that right foot back long behind you. So this time the arms are actually forward when you begin the pose. And now inhale up. Now bring the arms back forward. Bring the back foot in. And then I guess we'll just open them out to the side and bring them down. Just for some a little different. For the second side, remember which finger you crossed over. Saying that to remind myself. <laughs> and then bring the hands forward and step the opposite foot. In my case, it's the left foot back behind me. So now we've got this length forward. Hopefully you're getting that stretch in between the shoulder blades. Here. And then you can inhale it up. And then bring the legs, legs, the arms forward. Bring the 
back foot in. Open the arms out wide and bring them down. And a couple of breaths here. So you should have received some information there that was of use for your body, maybe. So now we're going to do a variation of warrior two. So again, bring the hands in front. Inhale and up. And because I started with my right leg back, I'm going to do that here. So bring that back foot behind you, turning it in. And then just turn the torso. And stay here for a couple of breaths. Turn the torso around, being you're bringing the back foot in, and then just let those arms float down. Then bringing the hands in front of you, do the opposite crossover, hands in front. Inhale, lift up, take the back, the left foot long behind you, and then you just bring the torso around like so couple of breaths here. And then pivot back around, bringing the foot behind you, and float the arms out to the side. And a couple of breaths there. So we're going to enter the pose in the same way, but we're going to float the arms down on the second side into the warrior traditional warrior two arm. So bring the hands together, press forward, inhale up, take that right foot long, and then you turn the body into warrior two, and then just float those arms to shoulder height. Did that help feel like you got the arms in the correct position or Maybe they feel longer. I don't know. For me, they felt really light when they came down. And then bring the hands up if you can again. You can come out the other way if that doesn't work. And then step the back foot in. And again, float the arms down. So now you know what to do on the second side. Bring the fingers in. Come forward. Inhale and up, step long behind you. So you're in the warrior pose with the torso, and then you just float those arms out, shoulder up. You can inhale them up, that works for you still. And bring the back foot in, and then float them down. And it was Warrior Three that I was playing with earlier that made me, that kind of inspired me in this practice. So now we're going to try Warrior Three and see how we go. And I found, I don't know, there was something more stable for me in it, but it might not be for you. So what I was doing was crossing the fingers, bringing the hands up like this, and I was bending my knee up with the straight leg underneath and just coming forward and for me there was something about the arms here that gave me a real sense of stability and then bring the foot back in and float the arms down a couple of breaths here And then bring the interlock fingers, bring them forward, lift them up, bend that. If I have the left leg up now, then you just extend forward with the arm and bring that back foot long behind. Up, down. So 
just as we did in the first pose. We're going to try the arm to different level and see if that gives you new information and works for you or not. So in, bring the fingers together to interlock, bring it in front of you. And now what happens is you flex the foot out and then come forward. probably feeling the need to do something with the hands so we're going to bring the palms down and place the knees on there and you can tuck the toes under if that works for you but whatever it's like we're using our knees to massage our hands a little bit and you can play with whether you want to bring the hips back more and get a stretch into the wrists this way but for me there's something about the knees and the hands that really the pressure in the knees and of course you can make the pressure work for you what kind of pressure works best for you and then feeling 
like, you know, you could have put something into your neck a little bit. So just drop your chin to your chest a little bit. And just do a little bit of a C curve in your spine here. chest to the chin. on your own. Of course, you can hold these longer if that's what works for you. We'll do one more. Pressing the feet, the heels in, feeling that connection from the heels to the sits bones. Pressing up, see if you can go just a little further, really getting the hips up. Decide if you want to do legs in the chair or feet up the wall if you happen to have a wall there, or if you just want to go into regular shavasana or something under your knees. So do what works for your body to head into shavasana. Because we all have different bodies and different needs. So do what works for you. whatever position you have chosen today. First, just notice what's happening in your shoulders, in your arms, what kind of new information did that practice with the arms offer you? have an answer, maybe you just have a sensation or a feeling or 
you're not quite sure. That perhaps there's some different relationship in your shoulder girdle, in your arm. that you've got a waterfall that is just coming from the head and it just permeates, flows down your head and face, neck, shoulders, arms, and your spine. you sit up. My light, me shines to the light in you. Thanks for being with me today. And namaste.
Thank you for watching and joining us. Namaste.